Suppose you wish to make a trip from one point in space to another point in space. Obviously, you want to get there as quickly as possible, and the path, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line, and therefore you should take that path. However, the path for the shortest time between two points is not always a straight line. We're talking about plane here, not nothing curved or anything like that. But let's suppose that the um, path that you're taking from here to here goes through two fields, a top field and a bottom field. And let's suppose that the top field is very smooth and you can travel rather quickly, but the bottom field is very rough and you can travel much more slowly. Would the path that gives you the shortest time between two, these two points, point A and point B, be a straight line? And the answer is no. And I've actually done a simulation to show this is true. So let's imagine that the top field, which is very smooth, you can move two meters per second. But in the bottom field, you can only move one meter per second. What is the path that leads to the shortest time to get from here to here. Well, I'm going to enter that number, and I've got an Excel simulation to compute the path that gives you the shortest time, and there's the result. Before I go on, let's uh, define a few quantities. Let's, I'm going to make an analogy with light. Let's call this angle here the angle of incidence. <laughs> And this angle here, the angle of refraction, because I'm going to make an analogy with light. But anyway, there's two angles here, this angle and this angle. And uh, <clears throat> um, in finding the, the path for the shortest time between two, these two points uh, makes the distance in the top field longer and the distance in the bottom field shorter so as to minimize the time. Now, if we make, uh, instead of the, the ratio of the times being 2 to 1, let's make it 4 to 1. Let's go from 2 meters per second in the top field and 0.5 meters per second in the bottom field. And you'll see that it has even a longer distance in the top field, as you can see. Now, um, there's, uh, the same is true of light. If light is traveling from uh, one medium to another, uh, let's say it's gone from this point to this point, and there's, uh, this is a top medium, it might be air, the bottom might be diamond, it gets refracted, and it follows Snell's law. And this is Snell's law right here. I just want to show you that, uh, what I've talked about for the fields is completely analogous to uh, light. Uh, the, 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 re the relationship for Snell's law is that the index of refraction of the top medium, air, let's say, times the sine of the angle of incidence, that's this angle, will equal the index of refraction for the bottom medium times the sine of the angle of refraction, which is that angle there. That's always true. And um, the index of refraction is simply the <clears throat> speed of light in a vacuum, C, divided by the velocity of the light in the particular medium. So for the top medium, it's VT. The index of refraction for the bottom medium would be speed of light in a vacuum, divided by the velocity of light in the bottom medium. So when you make that substitution, cancel out the C's, rearrange the terms, you get this re relationship. The ratio of the sines of the two angles, incidence and refraction, is equal to the ratio of the two velocities. And uh, in my analogy with the two fields, this, this relationship also holds. The sine of the two angles, I've computed the sines here, and the, the ratio is, is 4 here, and the ratio of the velocities is 4. There's a slight difference only because I've, uh, I've done small increments of 0.01. If I made my increments 0.001, it would be pretty much exactly the same. So uh, let's try another example. Let's make the bottom uh, phase even more rough and make it 0.1 meter per second velocity that you can move speed. And uh, let's look at the result, and you can see that it practically goes, spends, goes the almost the entire distance to the right in the top field, and minimizes the distance. It doesn't minimize it, but it's very small distance in the bottom field. Uh, let's go back to the two, 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 
And now let's uh, <clears throat> make the top field the rough one. And let's make it one. And you can see it, 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 it makes the, t the distance traveled in the top field smaller and that in the bottom field longer. So um, this is a nice analogy to let you understand uh, refraction. Light behaves in such a way that uh, it finds the path that gives the shortest time for the light to get from one point to another. And uh, it's completely analogous to the two people, uh, the, the people going, a person going from one field to another uh, where the uh, velocity is different. Uh, I'd like to mention before I close uh, Stephen Strogatz's wonderful book, The Joy of X, where I got the idea for this particular video. It's a wonderful book, and I highly recommend it. So thank you for your attention, and I'll see you next time.